Bobby Virginia, Wendy McCoy, I got you tied. Episode 12, the final episode of this series. And so let's get into this. So <laughs> I'm a little sad that it's over because it's one of my first shows of the season. And it's just, but it ended off well. It, it was a really good episode. It was a really good episode. It ended off very well. Wrapped things up with Rika of how she became a Chibuyoi to just how she is now and everything. Um, just all the characters coming, to, coming together, helping out Yuta. It was just, it, everything was good. Everything was really good. They even have a narrator in there trying to kind of express what the Chibunoi is and we all have it inside of each other. So it's it's cool. Like I said, it's, it was good. So let me try to wrap this um, summary up as quick as possible. So we have Dekamori. She acted normal in this episode. That was freaking creepy. Weird. <laughs> I didn't like it. <laughs> so we have Dekamori acting normal. We have Kamlin, which is like, she has a wicked eye now all of a sudden. She's acting just like Rika and I'm like what the heck is going on here like it's, it's so weird but you but Rika passed it on to her apparently <laughs> and so then we have Nubatani go getting deep you know she's talking about what is normal exactly you know what because we've been expiring to be normal so what is normal exactly and so that's a very interesting conversation she, that she had she's wondering well, well what is normal like it's, it's, it's good and so then we also then have Yuta come to the realization that you know it, it kind of is his fault because he's the one that told her to take off the eye patch and move move along, basically, you know, move on. And so that's what she did, but she's not happy. So she felt like he made the wrong decision. And then he realizes that she actually moved from her house to, you know, going back home and stuff. So she's gone now. And so he's like, oh, crap, because he thought she, he, she, he she was going to come back at some point, but she didn't. So he starts panicking and right, like reading this note that he left for himself. After reading that, he ends up going to go see Rika, ends up running to Colin, and Colin then thus explains... All, all her past basically like Rika really went deep with in Kamalin started talking to her and stuff so it was very interesting and so we get to see her all back her whole backstory after that Yuta ends up finally meeting her then they're doing an epic hug and then she finally ends up seeing the ethereal rising after they both leave and then went on the beach to see and then she ends up saying goodbye once she sees the ethereal rising which is cool like I said it, it, it was really good and at the end of the episode we ended up seeing um Yuta and well we end up seeing Rika going back on the roof like on the rooftop and then coming down and she's like you want to see the wicked eye and stuff it, it's just like from the first episode basically so I, I really did like that and that is the end of the episode so like I said I really really enjoyed this episode here because it just it, it literally did wrap everything up nicely it was really good Rick and Ishiki was like a molester in this thing this, this, this thing right here and the cops were coming after him and that, that also basically the question I'm really thinking like what was the consequences of all their actions exactly? Because the cops were there, you know. So I'm, I'm guessing something must have happened, right? So, but they didn't show anything like that. So I'm, I'm just wondering, because it's, it's weird. But let me let me let me like get to every, every character, you know. Here, um, when it came to um, Dicka Moore, Dicka Moore, you know, she had a lot of thoughts and she wanted to become normal or act normal, you know. what I'm saying because she felt bad. Because remember what happened last episode? Freaking YouTube went ham on her, so. You know, he tried, she just tried to act normal. And she said like she looked like a totally different character. I didn't know who she was. I thought I was going to have to write her new name down. I'm like, why is there a new character in the show? We haven't, like, what's going on here? <laughs> but no, it's actually uh, Deca Moore. And I was like, okay. And so, but she kind of like, that's not short lived because she ends up coming back to her old self like late, later in the episode. So, like I said, that like, didn't really matter, anyways. Because not to mention, Colin was, you know, the new freaking Wicked Eye Master in Christ. So, that kind of made it look like it was cool and everything. And. It's interesting that she kind of passed it on to her and then ends up telling her all this information and stuff to thus then give to Yuta at the same time. So, yeah, and Yuta feeling bad about what his, what his decision was, which, which I mean, I would see why, because he ended up telling her to just move on with this whole thing, leave this Chibuyo behind stuff, and that really was one of her salvations, something that really uh, made Rika, you know, feel better about herself, you know, like, like it's not really an escape, but it just... It was something that she needed, which what what um, Kamwin was saying actually, you know, really it saved her in a sense. Because the thing is, the reason why she is a Chibunyoi, like she going to the syndrome in the first place, not because she did it on her own free whim, is actually because he, she ends up seeing Yuta. Yuta was the one that actually inspired her to become the Wicked Eye and Master and stuff like that. So it's like whoa, you know, she was never really into that until he actually met Yuta, which is after, literally after. Um, her father died, and that's what really made her, you know, like this, be happy and stuff. So it's, it's very, very interesting that YouTube was the cause of this this cheap joy thing, and he was the one that basically ended it for her in a sense. <laughs> so it's like, what the heck, you know? So it's like, what the heck? But it's cool that, like I said, Kamwin actually got all the information from 
from Rika. I was like surprised he opened up to her like that. I wonder, I wonder exactly why, but hey. <laughs> and so then let's get into Deku. Well, not Deku more, but um, Nubatani. Nubatani was really thinking what is what is normal, and he makes he makes a good good point. And the same thing with the narrator was basically saying because they see at the end of the day, all of us, you know, you. In person sitting next to you, and then your family members, and me, you know, everybody has this, has some form of chibinoy in them, some kind of, you know, this eighth grade syndrome in them. They, they want to act, they want to act kid, kid, like kiddly, and a kiddly, what the heck kiddly, but I like a kid. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? They, everyone everyone has that little kid factor inside of them that they want to play around like this, you know? Everyone seems to have that. You know, it's just, even if it's there a little bit, it's there, you know? So that's what it was, it was all amounted to, and basically that is that is technically your personality, is yourself. So why change it? You know, that's why you, um also Rika liked you to because you two is true to himself is what she was saying. So you know what I mean? Just show that you know this is just your real personality. You don't have to try to hide it from anyone. Which, but this whole thing was trying. This whole episode was basically trying to convey to us. So like I said, I, I really did enjoy this a lot. You know, it's just it sucks that it's finally over. You know, but it's really, really good. A really, really good episode. Really, really, good, really, really good show. I expect a full anime review of this very soon, actually, because you know, cause I really, really enjoy this this show right here. Um, so yeah. Um, like I said, Ishiki in this episode, I guess I should mention him as too. Um, I mentioned him too. Ishiki was like a molester. Like, but the thing is, once Yuta went to go see Rika, um, her, Rika's parents or not parents, but grandfather and stuff like that, they ended up calling the cops, and so the cop came. And then he was gonna go take um, Yuta, but then that's when uh, Ishiki was trying to act like a molester to Nubatani because Nubatani wanted, her, wanted to play that role. And so <laughs> he had to go and run away from the from the police and stuff. All the while Yuta is trying to get Rika, and so Rika ends up getting you know going with them, going to the beach and stuff. After the fact, there's a cop car coming after them. So I'm like, what the? Heck? It's like, what, what were the repercussions for all this exactly? Like, are they gonna get in trouble for this or what? You know, I mean. I think if they clear things up, it should, it should, nothing really should happen. But it was just funny because all these cops were going after him. Like, Ishiki, you know, you were a predator, man. You know, like, <laughs> it's not good. It's not good. I don't know how he would be okay. <laughs> so, yeah. But it's also cool to see Conwen be, like, the deciding factor for all of it. Like, she was actually really important at the last episode. You know what I'm saying? You know, and she was really good at re um, reenacting. Um, I have like the dark, the wicked eye and stuff. It's it's really cool how she was able to react just like Rika. It's like it's perfect. It's like on par. Like it was really good. I like it. <laughs> so yeah, and it's not. Nice, it's also again nice to see, um, Yuta go into Dark Flame Master Mode. And, like we see the actual actual animation of him actually going into that mode. Like it was it was epic. Like it was, it was epic. I like it. But okay, okay. Like I said, this this was this was good. This was good. I like it. I they didn't kiss. But they had a big epic hug, which I was least hoping for, and they had another epic hug, so I really liked it. They really hold, they really held on to each other, like really, really tight. So I, I really liked that. So, yeah, this has been my review of Jimmy Demokoi Gashi Tai. Give me your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. I'd like to know what you guys think. Are you guys sad that it's over too? Because like I had to get my composure a little bit. Because it's just I, I really love the show. I really do. But you know, give me your thoughts and opinions on this on the show here today and stuff. So. Yeah, like the like this review and subscribe to my channel if you want to see some more seasonal anime reviews from me. So with that being said, it's been the Breakmaster, and until then, break out.